Yet production of plastics is an alt at an all-time high, and it's set to increase. The overabundance of plastics filling the oceans and landfills. Searching for fish, but finding an ocean of plastic trash. It's pollution. It's in concern for plastic pollution. Plastic pollution in the world's ocean. Life is greatly impacted by plastic pollution. First of all, plastic, most plastic, breaks down into smaller parts and it's ingested at the smallest level. Uh, fish will ingest the plastic and it works its way up the food chain. Eventually, plastic pollution has been found inside of whales, including plastic garbage bags. In our county, the number one way that plastic gets into our ocean is from blowing trash and plastic. And uh, through the culvert system, we have an ancient and degraded waterway system that was built maybe uh, prior to 1960. So um, anything that's blown or thrown onto a roadway, a street, drains to the ocean. And that is probably the number one source pollution is uh, street pollution and uh, people leaving trash on the beach. Yeah, marine entanglement is very difficult to see on a sea mammal. Just this past year, I have identified and documented three California sea lions that had monofilament, which is the fishing line, wrapped around the neck of the California sea lion. It becomes embedded, and depending how long the monofilament lasts, it can dig into the muscle layer, becomes abscessed. The animal generally, if the line is not removed, becomes um, infected. They start to starve because they can't fish, and um, it's a very slow, bad death if we cannot get to them and disentangle them. The garbage patch, uh, as you know, is between the U.S. and um, the Asian islands and Hawaii, and it's the size of Texas, and it is growing. The first sign that it started to grow and uh, where it originated, scientists think, is from the tsunami that hit Japan and released all that plastic garbage into the sort of uh, mini tornado <laughs> that's in the center of the ocean that swirls the plastic into a vortex. And um, 
interesting research lately has shown that scientists have found uh, signs of life actually on this plastic island and they're not sure what kind of organisms will be able to live off of a plastic island but it is sort of a demonstration of even though we create a massive amount of pollution that harms the oceans greatly biology doesn't stop biology still exists so it's a massive problem it's an international problem difficult to address the problem with plastic bags and plastic type pollution is that they sink. I've had this experience trying to clean up plastic pollution out of the Ventura Harbor for my kayak. And sometimes you can't even see a plastic bag in the water, but you can reach down and uh, it submerges about six inches to a foot. So when you put it, pull, try to pull it up, obviously it's full of water. It's also wet and it's heavy. So. It's not like picking up a plastic bag off the ground where it's easy just you know roll it up. The um, add, added factor of the weight of the water makes it much more difficult to clean up. Cleanup is when we get um, a bunch of local people just kind of come and we provide them with the resources like grabbers and buckets and um, you know hand sanitizer, gloves, whatever else it may be, so they can just come to us and then we kind of spread them out. And this is just the general public to clean up their local beaches. So we make sure we pick up microplastics, we pick up cigarette butts. There's a lot of cigarette butts <laughs> all the time, which is unfortunate. Um, and then when we come back, we actually uh, count what they bring back. So we want to make sure we have data on that. We share it with the city, with the state. Um, and also, it's good for us to also know that we're doing the difference, uh, making a difference. So at our monthly beach cleanups, um, we get you know over 150 pounds of trash picked up on a monthly basis. And we're coming to the same beach. So that means from month to month, we're either getting more trash deposited at our coastlines or it's making its way through the watersheds and down to the beach. So um, it's pretty alarming to come month after month and see all that's being removed. The number one trash item that we find at our beach cleanups is cigarette butts. We're constantly trying to collect these and prevent them from making its way down to the, the coastline where they'll just uh, form microplastic pollution in the oceans and they're harmful to wildlife. So uh, month after month we still see those uh, filling the parking lots near our cleanups and we're, we're picking those up and then also dumping them from our, our canisters throughout town. The Surfrider Foundation is dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's ocean waves and beaches uh, for all people and we focus on um, preventing marine pollution, you know, promoting beach access and um, just helping local ordinances get pushed through and pushing for state legislation that helps to protect the environment. <laughs>